This program is dedicated to those that paid for their lives at the hands of the state. Welcome to another edition of Silent Voices, the only program in America that you, the viewer, can express your concerns on the child welfare system. I am Dennis Lawrence, and beside me is Maria Mullen. Maria, what do we have up first for our viewing audience? I want to thank you for joining us this week. We have a lot of room to cover again in this episode of Silent Voices. To kick off the program, we are going to our good friends at Legally Kidnapped. This week's episode, Tales from the Child Protective Service Industry. Good evening. Once upon a time, there was a young couple who learned that they were unable to have children. So they decided to look into adoption. So they went down to the local Child Protective Services office to begin the foster adoption process. Hello, I'm a child protective worker. Hello, I'm Mrs. Jones. We just found out that we are unable to have children. You see, my husband shoots blanks. And her eggs are scrambled. And I so desperately want a child of my own. So we have decided to look into foster to adopt. That was your idea, dear. That is a very good decision. I will get you the paperwork and come to your home study tomorrow. Thank you. Oh yes, only a few more suckers like this and I'll get that federal adoption bonus for sure. Ha 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 ha. Meanwhile, there was a single mother who didn't get her child support payment this week. All we have is bread and water for supper tonight because your father didn't send his child support payment this week. I don't know what we're going to do. It's okay mom, we'll get through somehow. I wonder who that could be. Hello I'm a child protective worker. What do you want? We got a report that you were not feeding your child. That is neglect. I'm going to have to take her away from you and put her into a foster home. Please don't take my baby away. You should have thought of that before you decided to neglect your child. I will go get a removal order against you. Goodbye. So the worker goes down to the courthouse to talk to the judge. Hello. I'm a child protective worker. What can I do for you? Little Jane is being neglected by her mother. The poor thing is practically starving to death. We need to remove her from her mother's care and put her into a foster home right away. Very well then. Here is your removal order for a little Jane. Thank you. Goodbye. Then the worker goes to get the kid. Hello. I'm a child protective worker. What do you want now? The judge signed the removal order. Little Jane is going to come with me and there is nothing you can do about it. Please don't take my baby. Too bad. You are a terrible mother. Come along Jane. I will see you in family court tomorrow. So the worker took little Jane to a Mrs. Jones. I wonder who that could be. Hello, I'm a child protective worker. Do you still want to adopt a child? Yes, I do. Well, this is little Jane. She is a foster kid. I will terminate her mother's rights as soon as possible and then you will be able to adopt her and I will get the federal adoption bonus. Do you mean it? Yes, I promise. You will make a wonderful mother. Goodbye. Thank you. You have just made my dreams come true. The next day, the mother made her first appearance in family court. I call the case of little Jane's mother versus the child protective worker. Hello, I am a child protective worker. Little Jane's mother, you stand accused of neglecting your daughter by being poor and not having any food. How do you plead? Not guilty. Little Jane's father did not send his child support payment this week. It's not my fault. She is lying, she spends all of her money on drugs and stays out all night with a different guy each week. She is a terrible mother. She is lying your honor. I don't drink or do drugs, I don't have any boyfriends. I am a good mother, I want little Jane back now. I think we should terminate her rights, we already had a loving family who wants to adopt her. Give me back my baby, 
Never. Okay, ladies, here is my decision. Jane's mother will sign a service plan with Child Protective Services. This service plan will include various tasks that the mother will complete. If she completes the tasks, little Jane will be returned to her custody. If not, her rights will be terminated and Jane will be adopted. We will check on little Jane's mother's progress in six months. Goodbye. Little Jane's mother went home crying. The child protective worker went back to her office furious that everything didn't go her way. That stupid judge. Six months is too long to wait. But that's okay, I had a plan. Hello. Yes, I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart. Little Jane is a delightful child. She just brightens every moment of the day. Houston, we had a problem. What problem? The judge didn't terminate the mother's rights. Instead he gave her six months to get her shit together. But you promised I would be able to adopt little Jane. And you will, but I will need your help. Here's what we're going to do. So the social worker hatched out an evil plan with the adoptive parent. And the next day, she brought the service plan to little Jane's mother. I wonder who that could be. Hello, I'm a child protective worker. What do you want now? I have brought you your service plan. Great. What do I have to do? You must take drug screenings, psychological evaluations and parenting classes, and you can't get into any trouble whatsoever. That seems like an awful lot. Well, if you ever want to see little Jane again then you'll do it. I will check on you in a few months to see how you're doing. Oh and one more thing. If you screw up, little Jane will be adopted and I will get the federal adoption bonus money. Goodbye. Meanwhile, the foster mother worked on little Jane. Can I go home to my money now? No you can't. Your mother doesn't want you anymore. Yes she does, she loves me. No she doesn't. She hates you. But that's okay because you are with me now. And I'm going to take good care of you. Over the next six months, little Jane's mother jumped through every hoop that the child protective worker could throw at her. And then the day of the six month review finally came. I now call the case of little Jane's mother versus the child protective worker. Hello, I'm a child protective worker. And did little Jane's mother complete her service plan? No she did not. Yes I did too. This child protective worker just keep throwing more and more on. That's because we identified more problems as we went along. You did not. You made it all up to try to make it impossible. I did everything that was on that plan. I went to parenting classes, therapy, drug screenings, rehab, got a job, a new home. Now give me my kid back. Now. As you can see your honor, little Jane's mother has a horrible temper. I am satisfied that little Jane's mother has made a sincere effort to do everything asked of her. It is my decision that little Jane be returned to her mother in 30 days. Goodbye. The child protective worker went back to her office and called the foster mother for a meeting. Hello, I'm a child protective worker. So how did the six month review go? Did the judge terminate the mother's rights? When will I be able to adopt little Jane? The judge ordered me to return little Jane to her mother within 30 days. But you promised that I would be able to adopt little Jane. You will. I had a plan. What plan? All we do is get the mother to screw up. The judge will change his mind and terminate her rights. You will get to adopt little Jane and I will get the federal adoption bonus money. So how do we get her to screw up? That's the beauty of it. We don't. All I have to do is file a false report saying that she screwed up. Well this had better work. If I don't get to adopt Jane, I will expose your little child welfare fraud scheme to the court and you will go to jail. Goodbye. I guess it had better work then. So the worker then filed a false report with the court. Hello, I have some bad news about little Jane's mother. She has much housing by proxy. She will make little Jane sick. This is terrible news. What should we do now? We should terminate her rights so that little Jane can be adopted immediately. Very well, we will have the termination of parental rights hearing next week. Goodbye. So the child protective worker goes to see little Jane's mother. Hello, I have some bad news for you. The judge has changed his mind and decided to terminate your rights. Little Jane won't be coming home after all. She will be adopted and I will get the federal adoption bonus money. Goodbye. No. Then, at the termination of parental rights hearing. I now call the case of Little Jane's mother versus the child protective worker. Little Jane's mother, the child protective worker accuses you of having much housing by proxy. How do you plead? Not guilty, your honor. That child protective worker is lying. She just wants to adopt little Jane out so that she can get the federal adoption bonus money. That is not true. That woman is a terrible mother. I want little Jane back now. The hearing went on all day. All kinds of people testified on both sides. Then he talked to the foster parents. First the foster mother took the stand. Little Jane is very happy with me. She never wants to see her mother again. I love little Jane, and I take good care of her. She's lying. Then the foster father testified. I now call the foster father. 
Mr. Jones, I have been listening to all of these women hooting and hollering back and forth all morning. Will you please clarify a thing or two for me? Certainly, Your Honor. I am a good Christian man and I used to be a boy scout. I cannot tell a lie. It all started when my wife found out we wouldn't be able to have children. So she cooked up a scheme with the child protective worker that she would be able to adopt little Jane and the child protective worker would be able to get the federal adoption bonus money. Little Jane and her mother are nothing but victims of a child welfare fraud scheme. Then there was a big commotion in the courtroom. The judge had the child protective worker arrested for fraud, and the foster mother ran out of the courthouse and jumped right out in front of an oncoming truck and was killed instantly. Then, when everything had finally settled down, I am ready to make my final decision. Little Jane will be returned to her mother immediately. Thank you, Your Honor. Little Jane's mother went to pick up Little Jane. That's what, Little Jane, your mommy is going to come and pick you up today. Do you really mean it? Yes, I do. I'll bet that's her now. Oh, Little Jane, I missed you so much. I missed you too, Mommy. Thank you for telling the truth, Mr. Jones. No problem. How about a date? Sure. So Little Jane's mother and the foster father got together and a year later they were married and giving birth to Little Jane's brother. And they all lived happily ever after. I would like to introduce our guest. He is president of Michigan for Parental Rights, vice president of Citizens for Parental Rights, and the producer of Silent Voices No More, our very own Dennis Lawrence. Tell our viewers at home, how did you get involved in the system? Well, um, I basically got involved in the child welfare system back in 2008 as a grandparent we were trying to get uh, adoption of our grandchildren as uh, my son lost his parental rights uh, and I found out that a grandparent just did not have any rights in the system or any standing room in court um, and as I dug further I also found out that parents didn't have any rights and they had more rights but how unjust the court system was to them and just runs all over them especially the poor that uh, don't have the money for attorneys and um, I started going to some meetings and um, at WKTV and um, I saw the opportunity to uh, get involved into the media to let other people know uh, what really is happening in the system. Now, if I'm correct, um, is it true that you, in fact, did raise your grandchildren for a period of time? Well, our grandchildren were in three different foster homes in the first year. They did not want to give us our grandchildren. Um, the youngest one, was one and then there was a uh, well about one and a half and and two two and the young, young youngest was one and the oldest was two and um the two-year-old none of these foster parents could handle um there were several incidents where you know the screaming the up all night the uh cutting themselves uh, she was just out of control and so they bounced them around to three different homes finally um, we were able to get them and we just settled them down for 10 months and they, then they, after they settled down and became angels they decided they wanted to move them and in the process we found out there was very little as grandparents that we could say or even have a voice in the placement of our grandchildren. After they placed them in another home, the oldest one who was three at a time was molested in that foster home. These people were supposed to adapt them. Uh, we, you know, we went through the um, process of the uh, uh, foster care review board to uh, try to hang on to the children, but that was ran pretty much at Bethany Christian Services, the adoption agency, and these foster mothers that uh, decided our fate were all from the agency. 
they foster for the agency. So, um, and they they decided to award to these people, and they were there for six weeks as the oldest got molested in this foster care home. Um, later on, they were adopted out, and it looks like they were adopted to a good family. Um, due to social media and friends, I've been able to find out um, where they're at, and like that, it looks like a good family, but the fact is, these are my grandchildren. They're not the states, and there's, they're not this family where they place them. They're my grandchildren. Now, as a grandparent, that has to just break your heart to see that your grandchildren have been harmed and there's nothing you can do about it, not to mention the fact that they were they were doing really good in your care and, and with you and your wife and were just ripped away after a time period. You know, one's got a one's got a question whether the acting out was because they were in a place that was uncomfortable for them. Now, you built a website and social network. Can you tell me about this? Well, when I got involved, I, I saw that there was no, very little resources. And I wanted to bring people together, so I built a website on, on Ning site, uh, which uh, is the Michigan for Parental Rights dot Ning dot com. Uh, the site was a social network. Uh, we include some of our videos and we include uh, things that people have written and, and some info for people to take with them and uh, try to f uh, figure out the system. It, it's more of a communication. Um, we be sitting here back in the old days twiddling our thumbs and thinking we're the only ones this ever happened to. And come to find out I'm not the only grandparent that didn't have any rights. And that there were our grandparents that have taken this all the way to the Supreme Court but have lost. Um, so that's the idea. I did a Facebook group, which is a closed group. Um, we have over 1,500 members on that site. Uh, and that's for informational purposes, uh, keeps people up to date. We also have a uh, page that uh, isn't closed that um, people can go to too. So uh, we got those three websites going uh, for the people to communicate and get together and hopefully figure this out and um, give one another feedback what works and what doesn't work. I, I, think, I think the key is uh, especially if you're a parent, you got to hit it when it starts. You got to hit it within that first 48 hours when you first got that first hearing. And you got to hit it hard. You got to get those kids back if there's that imminent danger that exists in that home. Now, you and others came up with this, obviously, this TV show called Silent Voices. And that's. What you're watching right now is, you know, Dennis is the producer of the show. Um, can you tell me how you came up with that name? Well, we were sitting around a table and um, going, thinking, well, what do we want to name this show? Um, somebody mentioned Silent Voices, and I, I liked that the first, you know, the first hearing of that. You know, I'm thinking as a grandparent and I'm thinking as a parent how many times our voices are silent in the courtroom, how many times you don't have the opportunity to get any points across in the courtroom. And, I, and I'm also thinking about these children who don't have the opportunity to speak. So, you know, that, that was really uh, the concept with the name Silent Voices later on, in a, you know, as we um, entered our um, fourth season, we um, named it Silent Voices No More. Uh, we, we figured, well, we, we really want 
the public to know that we're not a silent voice, that we want to them to know that we are no more a silent voice. What exactly is the concept of this program in your opinion as the producer of this show? Well, the concept is to allow people to come on here and let their voice be heard of the things that weren't heard in court. It's, uh, you know, public access TV is a wonderful media that we use where people can voice their opinion <coughs> and tell the public things that they would not hear over the general uh, mainstream media. And uh, I, I think that's awful important because there's a lot of things that you don't hear on mainstream media that you should hear. It's, it's just like these blogs, how many times they have a story and somebody close to the story would actually tell on the blog what happened before the news stations even uh, get a hold of that piece of uh, item. So Dennis, what what is your next goal as far as taking this show to the next level? What do you think, what is the biggest thing that you need to help us go forward and move forward? Well, this fall we're initially initializing Google's Hangouts for webcams. We want to get people across the nation involved in this program. We want to interview them and put them on public access television. That's one of our goals. Another goal is sponsorship. We want the general public to sponsor our program. What is sponsorship? How does that work? Well, all you need to do is to get the initial approval from your local public access channel on cable to air this important program on a weekly schedule. Call your local cable TV company and find out where your public access station is located. Go down to your local public access channel. You, you don't necessarily have to be a subscriber to cable to use this channel. Now I want to make it clear that public access is quite different on your PBS, which is the public broadcasting system. This is the public access channels that cable is mandated to set aside for every region. Then you tell them you wish to air a lo you wish to be a local sponsor for a half hour weekly public affairs type program, which is produced at a different public access station. This usually doesn't cost you anything. There's, a, I know one particular place that costs you a $25 fee for the whole year. Um, but it usually doesn't cost you anything. Ask them to mail you any forms and rules needed for them to approve the program for broadcast. When you get the forms, call or email us here at MI parentalrights at gmail.com. That's miparentalrights at gmail.com. And we'll be glad to help you fill out these forms. And then you return the signed forms come to the station. The station will contact you when they approve the show for broadcast or if they have any questions. We're happy to help you through this process and let us know when they're ready for DVDs to broadcast and we'll send them to the station on a regular schedule. Some stations are now requiring files in MP2 form. Usually a station is willing to convert these into files or may allow you to convert them. If you are local in this area, Come and join us. We need help producing our shows. We need you to tell us your stories. The public needs to be aware of what is going on in the child welfare system. 
The object is to expose the corruption in the child welfare system. Um, you may want to also get a little bit further involved at your local public access station. Now we all already got the show, but we, we could use extra material. So you may want to take a class at your public access station um, to film others in various studios, or you may want to film them at home. If you, would, if you would like to be a guest on our program, to tell your story or what your organization has going to battle the child welfare system, you can contact us at miparentalrights at gmail.com and include guest in the subject line. And as I said earlier, we are going to be using UCAMs for those that are of distance and would like to tell their story. And anyone that has YouTube videos that would like us to run on the show, send us the link and permission to run these programs. Um, and as I said, you know, if you want to film some others for the show, we have a link to show you how. The important thing is people must get out and become involved. I just want to thank you, Dennis, for telling your story. And I know there's a lot of people out there who really appreciate what you're doing and um, being a voice for people that did not previously have one. Well, I want to thank you, Maria, also for, you know, letting me come on as, as a guest on my program. <laughs> um, but I think it's important that people are aware and know that we got this going. We want to be a media, since the mainstream media don't seem to want to cover this stuff unless it's a high-profile case, and then, then we're getting people on these blogs saying, oh, that, you know, that, that only happened in Maine there. That, that, that's a once-in-a-lifetime thing, and, and it's not a once-in-a-lifetime thing. You take Je just, just a, Jessica Politon, mm -hmm. for instance. I get those stories all the time here in the state of Michigan, and I know they're happening elsewhere. So, you know, people need to get involved, get these things out. If you would like to be a guest on Silent Voices, contact us at mi parental rights at gmail.com that's mi parental rights at gmail.com i want to thank you the viewers for watching this week you can catch us the same time on the same channel every week and again we stand up for against cps corruption and family court corruption until next week my friends remember your, your voice can, can make, make the, the difference, difference.